When I uh, first met Christine, she was quite ill and she was starting uh, a decline that we often see with patients with cystic fibrosis where they end up in the hospital more and more often. Um, the time outside the hospital becomes shorter and shorter. They're on more medicines, usually antibiotics. They're starting to have more side effects and really their quality of life is deteriorating. I never thought that CF would limit, it, limit me in any way as far as my dreams were concerned. I love to sing. When I started at UBC, things were a lot more difficult for me because all of a sudden I wasn't at home. I didn't have sort of the ever-present eye of my parents watching me. In second year, I had a very scary experience when I was coughing up some blood and it really shook me into reality because I nearly died from that experience. And that was sort of my first real wake-up call. Like, you know, remember, you've got a serious genetic disease and people die from this. Cystic fibrosis patients are uh, some of the most challenging patients we have for uh, lung transplantation for uh, multiple reasons. Uh, but they're also the ones that actually do the very best long-term because they tend to be very young, very motivated. Uh, they have very supportive families because they were born with this condition. It was at the point where I, I would have done anything. I would have given anything just to be able to jump out of bed and run out of my apartment and yell and run down the street. And of course, I couldn't do that. I couldn't even get out of bed. When I was recovering, my husband, Nick, was instrumental in helping me heal. Because absolutely, my family were everything to me. I knew that they were cheering me on from wherever they were, and of course, my mom and dad were down there. Typically, after a lung transplant, uh, patients uh, with CF have a uh, quality of life and an activity level that is indistinguishable from a normal person. Well, I always laugh when people ask me, you know, how's your life now compared to before? Because it's, there's no way to even describe it. It's hugely different. It's so much better. <laughs> After transplant, it's like you've been given this whole new body. Singing now is amazing. Now I have all the power I need behind it. There's only four programs in the country, and VGH is the only site in British Columbia where lung transplantation uh, occurs. A lot of the equipment would not be here, especially the high-tech, um, top-of-the-line new equipment that really allows us to do our job better, with less pain, faster and safer. It's all done through the generosity of our private donors. I think I chose Dr. Yi as my guardian angel because he was just so spiritually uplifting. He really was instrumental in making me feel confident that I could go through a transplant. It just felt like with him by my side, nothing could go wrong. When I was recovering from this really difficult surgery, every time Dr. Yi came into my room, it was as though a ray of sunshine had entered. It's really important that people donate to hospitals. Basically, the kind of things, that, the resources that we need to get better from surgeries like this and to undergo surgeries like this, are so important to have on hand and the only way sometimes that you can get the best kind of equipment is through donations. Donations save lives. <laughs>